Hello and welcome back to our walk through the book of Romans. This is our 10th video and we're just getting into chapter 4 of this 16 chapter long book. God has a lot to say to us in this very long book. Quick refresher on where we're at. God, through his apostle Paul, has shown us in chapters 1 through 3 that all of us fall short of being good in God's sight. Again, that's what's most important, right? If a bunch of liars and murderers think I'm a pretty good guy, that doesn't necessarily say a whole lot, does it? It's much more important to what God thinks about me. And God tells us in his word that we aren't good, but he has given us a way to meet his standards, to be good in his sight. And it's not by anything that we do. Instead, it is by simply believing, that is trusting in his promise to us that we are perfect in his sight because Jesus was perfect in our place. Paul now gives us a history lesson to show us that this has always been the one way to be right with God. Romans chapter 4 verse 1 says, What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh, discovered in this matter? Paul is here addressing his Jewish audience to talk about Abraham, the great ancestor of the Jews. Abraham is a monumental figure in the book of Genesis and really in all of scripture. Abraham is the great ancestor of Jesus and really, as Paul will explain later, the ancestor of all of God's people. As you read through the book of Genesis, you'll find that Abraham was both a man of great faith and of great sins. The question here is, what was Abraham's relationship to God? Was it based on his works, what he did, what he accomplished, how good he was? Or was it based on his faith, his trust in God's promises to him? The answer to that question will shed a whole lot of light on our relationship to God too. Verse 2, if in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. If Abraham could have been declared innocent by what he did, by his obedience to God, by how good he was, then yeah, he'd have something to brag about. He could boast to the whole world that he was so much better than everyone else. But was that the case? Let's find out. Verse 3 says, What does scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Paul quotes from Genesis chapter 15 verse 6 here and shows clearly that Abraham's relationship to God, his righteousness in God's sight, did not come from his works or his obedience, but simply from God's promise to Abraham, which he trusted. The word credited here is a banking term. It's like God has written us a check for our bank account to make us spiritually wealthy, even though we were spiritually poor. Paul explains, verses 4 and 5, Now to the one who works... Wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. Many people want a business relationship with God. They think our relationship with God is a matter of us doing our part and God doing his part. They say, well, if I obey God's Ten Commandments, then God has to bless me with good things. I uphold my part. God upholds his. Thank God that's not how it works. Paul just made it very clear in chapters 1 through 3 that if that was our relationship with God, all of us would have utterly failed to do our part. All of us would be in trouble. Instead, we see this concept of objective justification. Again, faith needs an object. Faith must believe in something. The object of our faith is the true God who declares the ungodly to be innocent. The people in that ungodly universe that Paul described in chapter 1, idolaters, homosexuals, those who disobey their parents, murderers, gossips, liars, those who invent ways of doing evil, and who applaud sinful lives, the people in just that universe who believe that God justifies exactly those kinds of people, they are the ones who are declared innocent in God's sight. Paul continues in verses 6 through 8. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. 
David is another great example from the Old Testament. Like Abraham, David was both a man of great faith and a man of great sins. David was an adulterer and a murderer, but even he found the blessed state of one who stands innocent before the judge. Not because of his works. I mean, his works stunk. But he was innocent because his transgressions were forgiven. That word forgiven in Greek gives us a lot of pictures. Our sins have been let go. They were thrown out of court and they're not allowed back in. We have been divorced from our sins. Our sins are covered over so that you can't see them. God doesn't count our sins against us. He doesn't calculate our sins or reckon them to us. He doesn't consider or evaluate them as a part of us. He doesn't think about or let his mind dwell on our sins anymore. Verses 9 and 10. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, but before. Again, the law of circumcision was one of the very key laws for the Jews. It marked them as one of God's people. They had misunderstood and thought that their obedience to this command made them righteous. Paul says, go read Genesis. Genesis chapter 15, where righteousness is credited to Abraham, comes before Genesis 17, where God makes the covenant of circumcision with Abraham. Abraham was already righteous far before he was circumcised. The first part of verse 11. And he received circumcision as a sign, a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. You see, the Jews thought that circumcision was the cause of their righteousness. But really, it's an effect of the righteousness that God credits to us by faith. In the same way, many people today think that what we do, our obedience to God, is the cause of our righteousness before him. It's not. Obedience to God is an effect of the righteousness that we have by faith alone. Continuing on in verse 11 to verse 12. So then he is the father of all who believe, but have not been circumcised in order that righteousness might be credited to them. And he is then also the father of the circumcised who not only are circumcised, but who also follow in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Again, we see this concept of spiritual Israel versus physical Israel. We who believe in God's promises are Abraham's children, even if we are not physically descended from him. We are his children in the fact that we follow in the footsteps of his faith. Paul's point is clear. You and I are saved in the exact same way God's people in the Old Testament were. People like Abraham and David. We are saved by faith alone, trusting in God's promises made to us in Jesus Christ. We'll see you next time. God's blessings on you until we meet again. Still